Neville Goddard said one time, Look upon your desires as the spoken words of God, and every word of prophecy of that which you are capable of being. Do not question whether you are worthy or unworthy to realize these desires. Accept them as they come to you. Give thanks for them as though they were gifts. Feel happy and grateful for having received such wonderful gifts. Then go your way in peace. This is from his book, Faith is Your Fortune. Today I would like to discuss feeling grateful in two ways. Number one, feeling grateful. Anytime a desire arises, feel grateful. I have it. Also, in relation to what was once desired and accepted as true in imagination that now appears made visible through the five senses from imagination, gratitude, thank you. This allows us to generate more of those kinds of desirable experiences and also remain in our ideal state of consciousness. Thus, I titled today's conversation Mind Map. Desire exists to be gratified in the activity of imagination. This is actually a quote from Neville's book, Awakened Imagination, which I'd like to reflect on a couple chapters with you, the first two chapters in a moment. I would like to relate this over to another quote from one of his lectures in which he says, when you come into the joy of thanksgiving so that you actually feel grateful for having received that which is not yet apparent to the senses, you have definitely become one in consciousness with the thing for which you give thanks. So the way I relate to this is desire is acknowledgement of already having, or as he says here, desire exists to be gratified in the activity of imagination. So if I experience it in imagination, I know I already have it. There's a feeling associated with it. Grateful. The same is to be said about experiences in life that were once desired, that were imagined and accepted as true, where I once captured the feeling of having what I desire. Wonderful relationships, lifestyle, certain experiences, etc. As I experience them in life, they were once first imagined, I'm grateful. So there's a feeling. I feel grateful for having received that which is, as he says, not yet apparent to the senses. Desire means I have it. Also, there's a grateful feeling for experiencing in life that which I once desired. Now, I came across this information, the law, specifically in 2004 through Think and Grow Rich. He spoke about autosuggestion, which is thinking feelingly from the premise of already having what you desire, from the premise of already being who you desire to be, which is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, whatever it is that you desire, from the premise of already having. Upon accepting that I already am, everything changes and I move on a journey to actualizing the vision. Some way, somehow, even though it was not apparent, the end result on the journey to actualizing the vision, I remain grateful because I know I already did the act. It was already done. A desire arose from God. It's fulfilled by God. All I do is I simply accept gratitude. So, the flip side of resistance is acceptance. Self-acceptance. I accept myself because you're fulfilling everything within. Anytime a desire arises, you imagine, I have it. I already have it. You fulfill yourself within. And more specifically put, the individual that appears appears to have an individual desire, yet these desires arise from the one cause within. Thus God gives desires and fulfills desires, and only God appears and animates all that appears to reflect the activity in imagination from desire. 
And everyone shows up sharing the same desire, which is why I say what you desire desires you, who you desire desires you. I've noticed this all throughout the experiences in my life. People show up and they desire to have the same things, or more accurately put, they accepted the desire as fulfilled and we play out as the theater where we meet sharing the life experiences that we once desired. And when the experiences are had, gratitude. When the experiences were had in imagination prior to them appearing, apparent to the senses, gratitude. Gratitude for the appearance, gratitude for the act in imagination. This is because imagination is the very gateway of reality, as he says here. And in relation to feeling grateful, if I feel grateful that I already have what I desire, I know I eventually experience it, even though it's not apparent to the senses right now. Ever since I started this journey, every definite chief aim to borrow from Think and Grow Rich has been actualized since 2004. Getting out of $50,000 debt, ideal relationships, manifesting a higher degree of success in my corporate career, unexpected income, wonderful relationships, building three successful businesses, wonderful lifestyle, etc. All of that is a result of accepting those desires as fulfilled. Because we know, as he says here, Desire exists to be gratified in the activity of imagination. Only God gives you your desires and fulfills the desires for you. The personal self and all that appears are emanations of the one universal cause within. I am, and there is no other cause. So desire means I already have. The question is, do I accept self? Or am I resisting self? Because on the flip side of resistance is acceptance. Desire arises, I accept it, I'm grateful, I have it. By accepting self through desire, I experience it as harmonious relationship with others or whatever kind of experiences of life that were the result of acceptance of already being the love that I once desired, the fulfillment that I once desired, the happiness that I once desired, the bliss that I once desired, the peace that I once desired. So there's nothing wrong with you, no shame or condemnation if a person experiences desire. Except that self-acceptance, true self-acceptance, I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The desire to experience these areas of life as life experiences, wonderful relationships, life experiences, etc., is why desire exists. As he says, desire exists to be gratified in the activity of imagination. And why the activity of imagination? Because everything arises from imagination. Only God appears and appears as and animates all that appears through imagination. As he says, imagination is the very gateway of reality. And this is the spiritual view. He says, truth depends upon the intensity of the imagination, not upon external facts. Facts are the fruit bearing witness of the use or misuse of the imagination. And no shame or condemnation. Now is where all the power is. What do you desire? Think feelingly from the premise of already having. Think feelingly from the premise of already being. And you acknowledge in that moment, you are that. You have, as a result of thinking feelingly from the end, acknowledge you definitely become one in consciousness with the thing for which you gave thanks. I have. Thank you. I have. Anytime a desire arises, thank you. I have. And we go about our life, flow-based journey to actualizing that vision, as he says here. The imaginative one does not deny the reality of the sensuous outer world of becoming. But they know that it is the inner world of continuous imagination that is the force by which the sensuous outer world of becoming is brought to pass. 
They see the outer world and all its happenings as projections of the inner world of imagination. The way I relate to this part here is harmonious, loving relationship between the inner and the outer, acknowledging that it's truly all one, not forcefully trying to resist or deny the reality of the sensuous outer world of becoming, because we know with certainty that it is the inner world of continuous imagination that is the power by which this outer world of becoming is brought to pass. Everything rearranges. There's only God. And God appears and appears to animate all that appears through imagination. So what do we say of the one cause within? The personal self may have desires. The personal self seeks to know the true nature of self, which is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The personal self understands the true nature of self through desire. By accepting desire as fulfilled, we experience it as the outer experiences of life, whatever they imply. We know thyself. We know thy true nature of thyself. And we experience the true nature of thyself. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual harmony. If one is in spiritual, mental, emotional, physical harmony, there's no conflict with the world because they acknowledge the world for what it is. They accept it for what it is. And they acknowledge that the world made visible through the five senses was first sourced from within. Everything is sourced from within. There's only one cause within, I am. He says the imaginative image is the only thing to seek. I love this part. The imaginative image is the only thing to seek. So we don't seek for external proof, validation, or confirmation. That can result in identification in a way where one tries to control things. Rather than allowing God to take care of everything, we simply accept in imagination we already have, regardless of appearances. Because, as he says, every state is already there as mere possibility as long as you think of it, but is overpoweringly real when you think from it. So identification to appearances, and more specifically put, identification to past imaginal activity in which one interprets the world made visible through the five senses from the perspective of denial, as in denying their vision. They're saying, perhaps, this person said that I won't actualize my vision. This environment or this condition says otherwise in terms of actualizing my vision. We're taught in Romans 12 too, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Have we accepted that we already have what we desire? that we already are who we desire to be. If one has truly accepted it, they acknowledge that the sensuous outer world is the outer world of becoming. And we know the inner world of imagination is the true power, is the only true proof, confirmation, and validation. And if one seeks it in the external world, that could result in identification, forming an identity around things. You transcend this world. You experience this world, yes. You experience what appears made visible through the five senses. You experience the five senses. You witness the mental phenomena in mind. You experience the emotions. You experience the behaviors. Thus, you transcend them. The appearances may change, yet you remain the same. You're formless. You'll always remain the same. Who you truly are is love, happiness, bliss, fulfillment, regardless of appearances. And so there's no need to seek for anything in this outer world. No approval, no validation, no confirmation. As he says, the imaginative image is the only thing to seek. 
so we don't form any identification, which can result in, as he says here, it has shown me that I can no longer excuse myself by placing the blame on the world of external things. Identification can result in pointing fingers to the outer world. One may believe that the cause or causes are existing in the outer world. There's no cause outside. There's only one cause, one universal cause within that animates all and appears as all that has been animated. I am. And to point to visible causes, we can consider that to be idolatry. There is no visible causes. Thus, we don't need to form an identity around appearances. If one forms an identity around appearances, if they become identified with those appearances, then they may have challenges with what he says here. The imaginative one does not deny the reality of the sensuous outer world of becoming. They might try to pretend like it doesn't exist, force things, flip side, fight or flight, one or the two, rather than being in flow, rather than experiencing inner and outer harmony as one. Because they know that the inner world of continuous imagination is the power by which the sensuous outer world of becoming is brought to pass. One allows the world to rearrange when they acknowledge that what they seek for, they find in imagination. Thus, imagination is the proof, the confirmation, the validation, the approval, and that's it. Because that's prayer. Matthew 6.6 6, When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This means go within by disentangling your mind from the evidence of the senses and focus your attention on operating from an invisible desired state. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. He says, Determined imagination, thinking from the end, is the beginning of all miracles. The future must become the present in the imagination of the one who would wisely and consciously create circumstances. We must translate vision into being, thinking of into thinking from. Imagination must center itself in some state and view the world from that state. Thinking from the end is an intense perception of the world of fulfilled desire. So again, why do we have desire? Desire exists to be gratified in the activity of imagination. The way I do it is I just capture the feeling. I already have it. If it's love that I desire, I already have it. It appears. If it's fulfillment, happiness, bliss, I already have it. It appears. If it's something specific, a particular business goal, a certain kind of relationship, I already have it, and it appears. Because only God gives desires and fulfills desires and appears and animates all that appears through imagination. And creation is complete. You have a vision. Maybe you desire to have a certain kind of lifestyle. You accept, I already have that lifestyle. I am that now. That's the way that I am now. I have a lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. Capture the feeling of already having it and allow the world to rearrange to reflect that state. It says, thinking from the state desired is creative living. Ignorance of this ability to think from the end is bondage. Now, no shame and condemnation. A person might react to an appearance and bring themselves into an undesirable state. That would be a result of identification, which is why I always recommend not seeking externally for approval, validation, confirmation, or proof. Because if one forms an identity around aspects in this world, if something appears to change, they may start to believe that it denies their desire from being actualized. It does not deny your desire from being actualized. One may enter into a different state as a result of identification to a belief. 
How do they know they're in a different state? Observe what they're thinking, how they're emotionally relating, how they're behaving, and you know what state you're in. And the way I like to do it is, what am I feeling is true now? Am I feeling that my vision is the reality now? As in, I'm seeing this world from my vision. Some way, somehow, it's on the journey to actualizing it. Again, not by fighting or denying the reality of the sensuous outer world of becoming that could result in resistance, stress, frustration. Simply accepting that the vision is the reality. Simply accepting that I already am who I desire to be in my vision. I am that person now. And what appears then? People appear. Environments change. I appear to change. Everything changes to reflect that state. What I say, what I don't say, what I do, what I don't do, what people say, what they don't say, what they do, what they don't do, all reflect that state. You know, one time I remember walking to a room, very specific example. And when I went into this room, I was aware of what state I was in. I was in what I would call a lack of fulfillment state. And it appeared as all kinds of seeking approval, validation, confirmation behaviors with the people in the room. It wasn't a desirable experience. I was aware of it. And in that moment, I captured the feeling of being fulfilled, regardless of appearances, regardless of judging by appearances. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I put it to the test. I accepted. I already am fulfilled. I captured the feeling right then and there of being fulfilled. And I changed. Everyone changed. They appeared differently. Harmonious relationships. They were having wonderful conversations with me. There was no seeking for external proof, validation, confirmation. None of that. Because when you know you're already fulfilled and you already have it, you don't need to seek. And everything appears to reflect that state of fulfillment. So how did they appear? Fulfilling, harmonious relationships. How did they appear before? Unfulfilling and inharmonious relationships. Proving the point again and again, this wasn't the first time, that people reflect our state. And we're always aware, you can be aware any moment what state you're in. By observing your inner dialogue. By observing your emotional relatability to the experience by observing your behaviors and not shaming or condemning yourself for experiencing emotions that way or thoughts that way or behaviors that way. Simply return back to the stillness for a moment. Release identification. Disentangle your mind from the evidence of the senses and focus your attention on already being who you desire to be already having what you desire. Acknowledge, I already am in the moment. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I already am that now. Feel it. And you'll observe the environment changes, everything changes to reflect that state. Because it's what you desire, as he says here. Desire is the mainspring of the mental machinery. It is a blessed thing. It is a right and natural craving, which has a state of consciousness as its right and natural satisfaction. It is necessary to have an aim in life. Without an aim, we drift. We all have desires. That's your aim in life. Desire means you already have it. Only God gives desires and fulfills desires. And so your aim in life, fulfill desire. You already know who you desire to be. You already know what life you desire to have. You don't need anyone's approval, validation, confirmation. That is another reason why I always say you don't need proof, validation, confirmation, or approval. Because if one forms an identity around those areas, seeking those areas, then they might go around asking people what they should desire. They might go and tell people about their desire. And if someone says something in which they interpret it, as denial of their desire, as in you should not desire that. What is wrong with desiring to experience the love that you already are? What is wrong with desiring to experience the fulfillment which you already are? What is wrong with desiring to experience the bliss, the happiness which you already are? 
there's nothing wrong with you for having these desires. And if they feel ashamed for having these desires, that could result in suppressing or repressing. What is being suggested here is that these genuine desires from the heart are from God and only God gives and fulfills desires and you accept the desire as already having. Again, and you accept the desire. By acknowledge, desire means you already have. Again, Matthew 6.6. 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Disentangle your mind from the evidence of the senses in that moment. People just reflect our state, past beliefs. Let the world be. Imagine that you already have what you desire, regardless of appearances. And I can assure you, everything changes. They change, environments change, people change to reflect that state. Because only God exists, and only God appears, and animates all that appears to reveal what has been imagined of the one cause within, I am. As stated in Joshua 1.3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So rather than suppressing or repressing desire to the point where a person drifts in life, they don't even know what they desire anymore because perhaps they've been suppressing and repressing, not understanding the true nature of their desire. Desire means you already have self-acceptance. I already am the love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By accepting, you are already that. You experience those areas as the outer reflections of life. And we do this by, as he says here, very precisely to practically apply everything we've discussed today. He says we must move mentally from thinking of the end to thinking from the end. So rather than seeing yourself as a spectator of these wonderful experiences and separating yourself from it, by suppressing or repressing desires, suggesting to yourself that you should not have it, so you witness yourself in imagination as a spectator. We abide in that state by playing an active role in imagination of already being that. I am that way now. That is who I am. And feel that gratitude. I am that now. Thank you. As he said in the beginning. When you come into the joy of thanksgiving, so that you actually feel grateful for having received that which is not yet apparent to the senses, you have definitely become one in consciousness with the thing for which you gave thanks. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I give thanks to God for giving and fulfilling my desires. The desire to be who I truly desire to be. Desires exist to acknowledge that I already am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I'm grateful and gratified in imagination upon accepting I already am who I desire to be. I already have what I desire. Acknowledging that imagination is the power by which the sensuous outer world of becoming is brought to pass the way I desire. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.